Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. We've got another guest with us today for, I believe this is session number six, Mr. Luke Taylor. Hey, y'all. Nice to meet you guys. Guys, if you guys don't know who Luke Taylor is, he is mostly known for his stairwell TikTok videos. He's also known for his somewhat recent appearance on American Idol. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And also, he is a member of the Wellerman, in case you have not heard of them. There will be more discussion of them later. But uh, we're excited to have you today. We're going to hammer you, hammer you with a lot of questions, and uh, hopefully my audience and your audience both will get to know you better. So, you ready? Yes, sir. All right. So, start off really, really light with this one. Uh, what is your favorite or preferred drink? Ooh, that's a good question. I really love whole milk. And a lot of people <laughs> absolutely dog on me for that. But I love whole milk. It's um, But I was a big soda guy for a really long time. Guilty pleasures. Has been to stop drinking soda. So I haven't had soda. It's like, what, the 21st now? Something like that. Yeah. So it's been three weeks. I'm doing all right. But I love soda and I love milk. So yeah. I, I understand the feeling, man. The milk, the milk is a guilty pleasure. People are like, yo, you've been drinking milk, bro. I'm 24 <laughs> years old. I'm still drinking milk. Shut up. I know. It's it's rough. It, I mean, I mean, it's rough, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I quit drinking soda back when, golly, it's been almost five years now, July of 2017. Wow. No, yeah, it's almost been almost six, actually. That's crazy. Dude, it, I'll tell you what's funny is that I, I feel so much better after quitting. Yeah. I don't know. It's. I feel like a total machine now that I quit drinking soda. Yeah, I know. I'm ready to move mountains. I'll tell you that much. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okie doke. So getting f stuck into our first uh, traditional question here, um, what or who got you into music? Hmm. I think my biggest inspiration when I was younger, especially for music, was my dad. Um, so my grandfather was a musician. Um, not by Trey, but he loved music and yeah. so other. So they really inspired my dad to take music lessons and to do music in general mm -hmm. and up singing and playing the piano with him. Um, and I feel like I've had a lot of really good role models, like choir teachers and stuff like that in high school and my professors now in college, just keep me going. Yeah. Uh, but I think if I had to pick one person to say that really got me into music, that would definitely be my dad. What kind of music did he do? Um, he loves country. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so he lived in Texas for a while. So. Oh, yeah. He's hot and heavy in the country then. Oh, yeah. 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 I, guilty pleasure. I'm also stuck in the country real heavy. I always have been. Yeah. It's a good one for sure. Yeah. How long is he? So has he been singing, play guitar, et cetera? Um, well, he mostly just plays piano. I think he knows a little bit of guitar, but I've really only seen him play piano. Gotcha. Uh, so he taught me a little bit of piano and a little bit of like basic music theory, but I didn't actually start learning theory until college. So I'm a junior now. Yeah. Um, yeah. He mostly would just get us kids around the piano and he would play for us and we'd sing for him. So he has a beautiful voice, even though he won't recognize it. <laughs> oh, I'm in the same boat. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm one of those people. I'm just like, I'm totally in denial. Yeah. People will tell me like, you got a good voice. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I understand the struggle. Yeah. So it was mainly your dad, but you also had your own inspirations and such. Yeah. About how long has it been since you recognized you had your voice and started singing and playing guitar? Mm, I've sang for fun forever. Um, I didn't really start singing for people until probably my sophomore year of high school. So it's only been probably six or seven years that I've been singing. And then I didn't start taking it seriously until I got to college. I wasn't even a music major when I got to college. Yeah. But I drafted to the school of music. So that's yeah. when I taking it seriously and taking voice lessons and learning about music theory and like oral training skills and stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you're how old now? I'm 21. 21. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Um, who are some of the most influential figures both in your life as well as your musical career? So I know you mentioned your dad. Is yes, there sir. any other figures that uh, stand out to you? Um, not music wise, but so this past year, um, I lost both my grandpas and one of my <sighs> grandpas 
Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. But um, yeah. my my pop and my pop up were both great, great men, and they really, really helped to shape me into who I am now. And yeah. I learned from them, um, especially outside of music. And uh, I really looked up to them a lot. So. And so, you, how recent was that again? Um, so my dad's dad passed away in January and his mom passed in March and mm. then my mom's dad passed away in November. Goodness, man. Yeah. Rapid fire. I know. I hate so- that. That's, yeah. but the, le- the mark they left on your, on your life is pretty evident for sure. Can't replace that. So definitely not. Yeah. Um, what is something that one of those influential figures has said to you that stuck with you your entire music journey or your just your journey in life? You can't know pain if you don't know happiness. Mm. I know you know happiness if you don't know pain. So, <laughs> but if you're always happy and you don't know what it's like to be sad, then you don't really know what it's like to be happy. And mm-hmm. so tough, it's important to remember that. Remember those tough things because they make the happy things so much better. It, it makes you reflect to you like it, it's cool because you'll have you'll have these bad times but then they make you appreciative of the good right yeah absolutely you know i feel like i've developed a good attitude towards rough times because i know that they'll pass and mm-hmm. uh, they've helped make me a stronger person so definitely yeah and truly for those that haven't experienced that many bad things in your life the the when you do experience it you may be asking like what's what good can come of it yeah you'd be, you'd be surprised look yeah. in retrospect you'd yeah. be surprised yeah. you would be surprised yeah. so um moving on to another uh, music question uh do you play any instruments other than so you you play guitar are there any other instruments that you play yeah so i play um acoustic i play bass piano ukulele Ooh. Um, it's a little bit hard for me now because I'm a large person, so ukulele is a little bit tough for me. <laughs> uh, but, and recorder, I don't know if that counts, but I really tear it up. <laughs> That's my, my magic right there is the kazoo. Lord have mercy. I, I remember when we used to play those in school. Yes, elementary school. Absolute dog water at it, but, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how long have you play, been playing all these other instruments? Um, well, I taught myself everything, so it's just self-taught figuring it out. Um, guitar, I've been playing, like actually playing for myself, not just like strumming chords for (laughs) a half now. Um, and then piano, I've played for probably three years. Uh, ukulele was like my first, um, handheld instrument. I started playing that when I was probably 13 or 14. Um, I mean, kazoo. Anyone can play kazoo. <laughs> that one down, and then, yeah, that's about it. Electric is pretty, pretty similar to acoustic, obviously. And then, like uh, a bass is fairly easy. I started playing bass probably senior year of high school. Interesting. Yeah. What do you have a favorite out of any of those instruments you have? I love my guitar. I recently got um I got sponsored by Gibson recently. Ooh, um, really? Yeah. So they sent that's me that's cool. Uh, G45, which is the model that Johnny Cash played. Whoa, that, that's cool. That guitar, it just wants to be played. It's beautiful. I mean, it just screams, play me. Yeah, seriously. Um, and so I'm slowly getting better. I'm definitely not amazing at it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I love being able to just sit down and figure it out. Obviously, piano is great for that, too, but you can't bring a piano with you everywhere. So. No, not necessarily. I mean, it, ah. it, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do. <laughs> Yeah, it's um uh when before we move on to the next question, can you um check and see under like settings under your app right here? There's yeah. uh try to remove the um noise cancellation cuz it's it's it might be I think it's cutting out some of the stuff that you're uh saying. All right. Um, under a certain level, but while you're doing that, um there should be a setting for it. If do you under settings? I don't see it right now. Okay, that's fine. We can work around it, and we, if we need to, we can cut this part out later. But, yeah. um, so, uh, what are some things that most people may not know about you? Let's see. 
of course you've got your like your music life and your online life and such but what are some things that people might not know about you as in general uh, i love working with my hands i was a carpenter for a while i did framing um i also love carving spoons it's one of my favorites that's like my go-to gift for people oh, that's cool i don't like buying gifts for people because anyone could buy that gift for them yeah I'll make something for them and show them that like i did this for you because i care about you um, yeah yeah and I love just working with my hands. Um, I also love records. I don't know if you can see them. Let me see if I can turn this. Oh, that's yeah, so cool. My record player and my vinyls. Um, I mean, I'm a pretty simple guy. I, I am trying to get better at video games. I actually didn't get a phone till I was 18. And I didn't have any video games when I was younger. I mean, I had like a Wii. That's like... <laughs> but I mean, all you can do is like Wii Sports Resort. Um, yeah, so I'm into gaming so I can be more in contact with some of my friends that I don't see as much anymore. Yeah. Um, let's see. What are some fun little things about me? My least favorite chore ever is the dishes. I, you and me both. I cannot stand doing the dishes. I will vacuum the whole house, sweep everything, wipe every surface down, but I just cannot get myself to do the dishes. I'm and I'm in not the same one, the same boat. I just yeah. can't like, it's just, it's so bad. Yeah. It's so yeah. dreadful. I like, I, I would literally, my mom back when I was living with her, she, that would be one of the first chores she would ask me to do. And I swanny, sometimes it felt like she was doing it just to, just to get under my skin. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was like, you know, I hate it. No, she <laughs> wasn't. She didn't actually, but like, it felt yeah. like it. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, yeah, it'd be like an hour later. Why ain't you done the dishes? Well, you <laughs> see what had happened was, <laughs> <laughs> so, I just can't stand the dishes, man. It sucks. Even now, I'm living on my own. It sucks. Yeah. Because now, about me. Sorry, I didn't. Mean no, to yeah. No, no, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So, if you know me personally, you'll already know this about me. This is my whoopee. <clears throat> I always have a whoopee on me, so I have this fun little condition called hyperhidrosis. So as long as above like forty degrees, I sweat. I know TMI. But you will not see me in person without a whoopee. So, um, I mean, start selling them, you know. I'm sure that it could can, it can be a brand of mine. It's just whoobies. So, we'll see. Coming to you in uh, the summer of 2023. <laughs> just slap your name on it and there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, this this condition, you said it. you, you, you end up excreting sweat above, like, what, 40-ish degrees? Yeah, 40, 50 degrees somewhere around there. Wow. And yeah. And you could and you could do this like in the the smallest amount of clothes, you'd still be sweating. Yep. Dude, summer is horrible. <sighs> man. Yeah. yeah. I feel for you, man. I and I th I thought it sucked being me whenever I was when we get hot outside. Uh, I'm always <clears throat> I'm, I'm... Do you ever like have do you ever like work out or go to the gym? Yeah. Yeah, so, so... I was going to ask you how that worked with your condition. Yeah. Um, so I power lifted for a while. Did you? Uh, yeah. So I would just come home. My shirt would be stuck to my body. <laughs> um, like, it's just, I've gotten used to it at this point. It doesn't change the fact that it happens, but it's just like a little, a little quirk about me. If you... <laughs> ah, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Dude, I I feel I already feel like I know the struggle, but then again, I don't. <laughs> Not too bad. A whoopee. Yeah, whoopee. carry the whoopee around. That's He's an interesting name. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, um. So, what are the, some things that you do in your off time when you're not singing, recording, performing, etc.? Sleep. That's a, <laughs> I love sleeping. I could sleep forever as long as you didn't wake me up. Yeah. Uh, I also love to cook, um, and I do enjoy most TV. I'm not a big anime guy, um, but um, I do like TV and movies. Um, I also have a cat named Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill. <laughs> um, so, I mean, life's always busy. I'm always doing stuff. So, Especially yeah. since you uh, took off with that voice of yours. Yeah, man, it's been crazy. Um, so, 
Uh, but on to a little more music stuff here. Uh, what are some, well, you already asked that question. How often do you practice singing throughout the week and how long do you typically practice for? Um, so I am in music school right now. I go to Liberty University. I'm a junior um, and I'm studying commercial music with a focus in voice. So pretty much every day I sing, whether that's in a class or a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. I also sing on my own time. I love singing. Um, so usually rehearsals are anywhere between an hour and three hours. Um, but when I'm on my own and just relaxing, I'll usually sing for an hour. Um, plus warm ups. I always warm up before I sing. That's a big thing. If you want to sing, make sure you warm up. Yeah. So, yeah. I sing every day. So every day for at least an hour. Yes, sir. Let's see. Uh, that leads me into the next question. You were mentioning warm ups. Uh, what does your room up warm up routine look like on any given day? Um, a lot of bases usually start warming up their lower. <clears throat> But I usually warm up my higher register first because I feel like that helps me fill out my low register. Um, so I love doing like scales like, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. so that, um, you're just sliding all around, just being extra loose about everything. Um, because one thing that I'm not a huge fan of when it comes to music school is I am going to be classically trained. So I have to learn opera. Oh, yeah. Um, not a huge opera guy, but if you can sing opera, you can sing anything. Yeah, uh, definitely. So there's a lot of like niche warm ups that I have to do. With. If so. you ever, if you ever need, um, any opera advice, um, have you ever heard of Peter Barber? Oh yeah. He's one of my buddies. He's awesome, man. Yeah. Ridiculous. Dude is crazy. Yeah. I was going to say, I was going to say, if you, if you didn't know him, he's the perfect guy for it. He really is. Um, so, uh, do you have a go-to warm-up exercise for any given like vocal day, any given singing day, etc.? Um, my chamber choir director gave me this one warm-up. He does it pretty much every day, um, and it's beat biddly o bop beat up buddy dot d. And your mouth is always moving, your lips are always moving, your tongue's always moving. So it's beat biddly o bop beat up buddy dot d, and then you just go up and you go down, and that gets your mouth just moving so that's, that's like an all-rounder i think yeah seriously i need to give that a try yeah i have to give that a try whenever i'm going for my recordings and such there it's you pretty go. cool um let's see so what let's see so what are some of your record high and record low chest notes as far as like your range well record low is probably an f1 <laughs> Yeah, I know. I so my my typical range is like I can growl out an A or a B flat, but usually it's consistently between a B one and like an E four, somewhere around there in my chest. Um, obviously, some days I can go higher, some days I can go lower. I think the highest I've gone recently <clears throat> F sharp four. Um, but I also didn't like my voice didn't drop till I was seventeen. Oh, wow. So I was an alto until my junior year of high school. And so I <laughs> felt well up into the fifth octave. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then you drop into the depths. Yeah, way down here. <clears throat> so, so you, what was like, what would you say the bottom of your range was before you dropped? Probably about an octave higher than it is now. So like it, like the lowest being like a low second? Low second yeah. octave is this? Probably like, probably like it's a B2 was probably like until about my junior year that was <laughs> yeah i i was like 411 and i had this super high squeaky voice um and now i'm just way down here so i mean you speak at a c2 uh, c sharp d flat to right around there so yeah I, I get low bass vibes yeah like bobby level but bass vibes <clears throat> yeah well bobby is just ridiculous dude like <laughs> So I, I have a naturally low speaking voice, but my singing voice isn't that low compared to my speaking voice. Yeah. Bobby and Peter, um, those guys, there's so many people on TikTok um, who just have such amazing control over their voices. And I'm getting there. I'm not there yet. And I've been blessed with an awesome voice. But like Bobby and Peter, their subs and their chest are just ridiculous. Like, <laughs> they can do things that I can only dream of so yeah, definitely yeah. man definitely 
gosh, I mean, it's crazy too to to think about like you've got a chess note that that you've sung once before that most people can never even come close to. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty baffling. Yeah, it's really wild. And cool. and so, what's your what's your, like your typical morning voice like lowest out of curiosity? Usually, usually an A flat a or an a flat sometimes a g mm. but if i get sick whew, that is game over absolutely game over. destroys your low range oh yeah so little secret i've actually never told anyone <laughs> my most viral video i had a cold two days before i recorded that and that's when i hit that low f Whew. so my voice was still recovering from that and i woke up and i had a g and i was like yeah I need to record and I was actually on tour with <clears throat> I sing with called shine. Yeah. Um, and we were staying at this hotel in Virginia beach. I recognized like the stairwell just has such good resonance. Um, and I was like, dude, I have to record something here, but it was at like six 30 in the morning. Cause we were singing. <clears throat> church service. So I was like, I've got like maybe five minutes to record this. And I two takes. I didn't even look at the footage and I just walked out the door and then I posted it. Didn't think of like, think anything of it. And then I came back and it was already at like 2 million views, like four hours later. Wow. Yeah. Like ridiculous. So, I mean, you, and you didn't even listen to it at all. You just no. like post. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. And that's how long, how long has that been now? Just about a year. I think it was March of 2021. That is crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> that is crazy. Yeah. But... How does it feel being that popular on TikTok? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, so naturally, I'm a shy person. Mm -hmm. I go out of my way to talk to people, but I will talk to people. Yeah. Having a lot of people like know who you are. And personally, I don't think I'm anywhere near famous, but there are so many people that will walk up to me and be like, oh, my gosh, you're Luke Taylor. Like you're a celebrity. And it's like, <laughs> like I'm trying to buy mac and cheese. Right? <laughs> you appreciate my voice, but I don't feel that way about myself. Yeah. But it definitely, definitely has some perks. Like with a lot of companies, if I like what they do, I'll just DM them on Instagram. They're like, yeah, here's some free stuff. So I mean, <laughs> it definitely got some highs and it's got some lows. Um, I'm definitely not upset by people that come up to me. It's just, I'm not, you I'm not a so yeah yeah it's it's pretty humbling though isn't it yeah seriously it's it's the craziest thing ever to watch someone like you just blow up and then you just you're just as humble as the rest of us yeah it's, it's awesome. pretty cool yeah and the coolest thing about it too was the way that i actually was able to get in contact with luke um long story short it, it's basically a friend of a friend but yeah. it's a little more complicated but technology is a wonderful thing so, um, it's really, it's, it's a cool experience. People start to understand like, yo, you're what's my doodle or in yeah. people recognize you in public and stuff, you know? And I'm just some guy, like <laughs> just a guy with a low voice. Yeah. It blows my mind <laughs> that like that, that has happened to so many people, including myself. Like I've been so blessed with that. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so what are, um, this was the second portion of that question. I kind of got off track. Uh, what are, so when I asked you when your record high and lows, um, can you sing, what's your lowest or highest right now? <clears throat> I have no clue. Um, let's see. <laughs> Lots way up there. I think that's a, a C or a D somewhere up there. C4. Yeah. And then that's a C2. That's a monstrous C2. Yeah. So somewhere around there, it's usually between, <clears throat> well, obviously I can brow a little bit lower and squeak a little bit higher. <laughs> but yeah, it's usually somewhere around there. That's a pretty healthy range for a low bass. Yeah. Pretty healthy, man. Yeah, hey, man. Um, so uh, let's see. Oh, uh, so what are like, 
Oh, I have to ask you this question later. I started going into a question, but I don't want to skip to that one. Um, what are some of your personal favorite artists that you collaborated with? That I've collaborated with? Before. <clears throat> um, that I've collaborated with before. I mean, obviously, Bobby Waters, ridiculous. Same with Peter Barber. All those guys that I recorded on the um, Misty Mountains. Yeah. And, um, shoot um pirates of the caribbean song that i'm blanking on the name for all of those guys i mean i love all of them i've been like so blessed to record and collaborate with so many amazing people but those guys have to be my favorite because they're so humble and so down to earth and everyone's just so supportive of each other yeah but i mean i'm i'm looking to record with a lot of really cool people um if you've heard of home free i love home free yeah. So Austin Brown is one of my buddies through social media. And so he and I have been trying to record for probably a year now, but it's just not been working out because I mean, I'm still in school and he lives in Nashville. Yeah. But I'm hoping to record with him soon. Um, a bunch of other people. I've been having people reach out to me for um, voicing movies and <laughs> stuff like that, which is awesome because seriously, I never thought that I would get to do this. I was going to be a carpenter. Like I was going <laughs> to the rest of my life. And I was cool with that. I love Untapped working. potential, right? Yeah. Seriously. I love working with my hands, but I mean, I've always wanted to do music for a living. And <clears throat> I just thought that that would be a possibility for me, but I just put myself out there and I suck with it. And here I am. Yeah. And at the end of the day too, you can still work with your hands. You just do it in a different way. Yeah, seriously. Um, so who are some people that you would like to collaborate with in the future? I know you mentioned Austin Brown. Yeah. Um, man, like dream artists or just people that I think I could actually record with either way. Okay. Well, what? I love, love culture wall. Um, yeah, he's cool. My favorites, just his, his lyrics and his presentation and the way that he holds himself. I, as just, he's such a phenomenal musician. Same with Tyler Childers. Um, I'm a big country music guy. I love country western music and like that Appalachian folk kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's so many people that I would love to record with. But I mean, those are a couple of them. Yeah, for sure. So, for sure. Yeah. Have you uh, given any thought to like uh, doing anything with like maybe Lauren Paley, Melinda? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> I have a lot of TikTok friends in Nashville. And so Lauren Paley's in Nashville. I know that. Um, same with Spencer Crandall. Um, a lot of people like that are just down in Nashville. So I would love to, at some point, just like send a message to all my friends and be like, hey, I'm going to Nashville. Let's do something. And <laughs> yeah. I'll, I mean, because I'm pretty versatile. I can I can do a lot of different things. And so I'd love to be able to actually go and do those things with people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um. Do you have any tips, tricks, or life hacks for anyone that sings, wants to sing, or is trying to make a career out of singing? Absolutely. The one thing that I tell everyone um, is don't try to change your voice, and especially don't try to change who you are in order to gain an audience. Mm. I've done a pretty good job at staying true to myself, and I know a lot of people <clears throat> are successful, have gotten, have gotten successful while staying true to themselves, like Bobby and mm -hmm. Pete. Um, because once you try to change yourself to make other people like you, you won't like yourself. And so yeah. you go into the music industry with the idea of only making other people happy. You won't find success because you need to be happy in order to be successful. Yeah. So this piece of advice is stick to what you love and the people will follow no matter what capacity that's in. It's better to be happy and have less of a following than to have a big following, but not want to be a part of that following. Because yes. I'm very lucky just recording whatever. I don't have a schedule. Yeah. I just record whatever I want to record and I love it. Yeah. Because I'm making a living off of music, posting what I love to sing. Yeah, exactly, man. But, yeah. Is it not like the coolest thing ever, like I said before, just to be able to work as you please and take these jobs in as you want to, and you just sitting there and you're enjoying life? Yeah, seriously, it's amazing. It's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I've experienced the same thing with this YouTube channel. It's it's truly humbling, man. Yeah. It's I'll super. be 
albeit a lot farther down on the rungs, but still on my way up. But I still, I still am enjoying this so much. And yeah. The fact that I can, I can do this and and provide for myself at the same time with what I'm doing on this is just mind blowing. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It is truly, truly crazy. Yeah. Um, so that brings us to the end of the traditional questions that we do. So now it gives you just a little bit of a break. So this will give you an opportunity to advertise, plug any merch if you have any, talk about your musical career, what you got going on, anything coming up. You have the floor for the next few minutes. Perfect. <clears throat> Um, well, right now, I actually have a lot of plans. It's been a busy year already. I mean, it's still January. Yeah. Uh, but I've been, in, I've been getting in contact with a lot of people for merch. So I'm getting a merch store coming soon. That'll be in my link tree, in my bio for my Instagram and my TikTok. And my handle for all of my social media is underscore Luke dot the dot voice. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Underscore. Mm-hmm. The, put that on this. And I will um, I will put your information in the description for them. also. Perfect. Yeah, um, I've been writing a lot, so I'm actually taking a songwriting course in college right now, which is super cool. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so my goal is to write a song every week. And so with that, uh, I just set up a Patreon page. I'm going to put that in my link tree as well. A lot of things going in my link tree. Um, and so every week I'm going to upload the lyrics um, for the songs that I write, good or bad. Um and then for, I mean, obviously for the different tiers of my subscribers, you'll get more like some people will get just the lyrics. Some people will get the audio and the lyrics. Some people will get a music video, the audio and the lyrics, um, stuff like that and chord charts. And so I'm really excited to get into that a more. Um, and let's see, The Wellerman, which I am a base uh, for that group. We are dropping an album. Uh, I can't remember the exact date. It's in February. I trust that I can send you the info and you will put that on the screen somewhere. I will see what I can do. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm all over. If you guys want to get in contact with me, um, feel free to re- reach out on Instagram. Uh, my DMs are open. Same with Snapchat. You can add me on Snapchat if that's your thing. Um, feel free to follow me on Instagram. YouTube also, I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel and post some more full length YouTube videos on there, um, mm-hmm. especially some originals that I really like. So I'm hoping to grow that. Yeah. Also, I just bought my first gaming PC. I've had PCs before, but I've never had a gaming PC. Yeah. Because I really want to get into streaming on Twitch. <laughs> um, so if that interests you, if you want to hear me talk while I play video games, which I'm not very good at, <laughs> Twitch is the perfect place for you. That'll also be in my link tree. I'm not sure when, but you can always keep up with me through all of my socials. And uh, I'm really excited for what the future holds for me. I stay in touch, man. I I might actually uh, play a game or two with you, depending on what you got. I yes. got a I got a PC myself. Nice. Uh, ignore those shorts. <laughs> no, you're good. Nice, man. It's 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 good enough. Yeah. You can play just about anything, really. Yeah. I'm a big Minecraft guy. I love Minecraft. Hello, Minecraft yeah. day one day. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Okie doke. So if you've got your uh, self promo section done, then I will move us on to the next little section where you have the floor to ask me any questions. Should you have any for me? Perfect. Yeah. All right. So Mr. Drew. Yeah. You've been doing this. You said how long? Yes, sir. So currently it's been as of right around the beginning of November of last year. So Not, 2022. Yeah. So you've got yourself a good little following. I'd say, I mean, 2000 followers in two months. Yeah. It's, it's really crazy. Yeah. That's ridiculous, dude. It's, it's beautiful because I, I would, it's, it blows my mind that people actually want to hear what I had to say. Yes. That just, it's so crazy to me. Like, I, I am just like some dude, and then it's just so many people that are just like, I love you enough to click a button so I can keep seeing what you do. <laughs> yeah. Like, the internet just blows my mind. I'm not a technologically savvy person, so it just it blows my mind that there are so many people getting these amazing opportunities. 
um, to make a living off of social media, and I'm sure that you will be right behind me. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. And the cool, the coolest thing about this is that the reason I'm doing all of this is so that way I can, people can get a better appreciation for music. Yeah. I, so I, I do the reaction and analysis thing a lot like Peter Barber does, a lot like Jennifer Glatzoffer, et cetera. Yeah. I am by far, I am far from a genius, but I like to share the knowledge that I do have. So that way people give you like, I love this music. And then I'll be like, do you know why you love it? Yeah. Let's, and then let's listen to it. And then I'll be like, listen to this part. Oh, listen to the tone of the person singing here. Look, yeah. Listen to this three part harmony, all this stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. And then people are like, I appreciate that on a whole nother level. And I'm like, that's the ticket. Yeah. That's that, one like about being in music school is like, I've always loved music, <clears throat> but I understood how it works. And I'm not a phenomenal musician by any means when it comes to theory, at least. So now that I've been taking classes, like understanding and hearing those little things in song, yeah. mind blown. Because, like I know how that works, and I know that's why it makes me feel this way, or people react this way. Yeah, and music is just such a gift. It really is, and that's only a part of what I do. So yeah. I, I mean, I'll do that. I do the reaction. I do the analysis, and then this is my primary niche: is interviewing people like you and getting to know the people behind the music is yeah. what I'm doing. And it's a beautiful thing too because not only do I get to interact with some pretty cool people, it's just I get to bring them more to light, but bring also bring things that people might not know about them to light. Yeah. And it's a cool. It's really cool too to just sit down and geek out over music and the voice. Yeah, oh yeah. It is the coolest thing. Yeah. So, are you a musician yourself? <clears throat> uh, somewhat. Yes. So, yeah. my history, my history starts off at um, <laughs> it starts off in band in middle school. There you go. Um, I played trombone from sixth grade until senior year in high school, and I didn't take it serious until I hit freshman year of high school. Yeah. And then after that, I just kind of, I kind of dropped it after I uh, graduated. I still play some here and there, but yeah, I know that was something I played. I've been playing a touch of guitar here and there. I just pick. I'm not yeah. really that good at it. Yeah. Um, I've been picking around since probably 11 or 12 years old. Yeah. Um, I was saying nonchalantly, not really knowing what I was doing. Probably from the age of like 13 or 14 <laughs> when my first my voice first dropped. And yeah. I, thought, I thought I was a bass. <laughs> How wrong I was. <laughs> um, and then I just kind of, after that it was, <coughs> it, it was mainly just the trombone for a while, picking around on the guitar. I picked up piano, but I, it's kind of like the guitar thing as well. I'm, I only pick around a little on it. Uh, but my main thing right now is just singing. Yeah. I didn't really start actually actively singing, warm, like learning the voice, warming it up whenever I sing, recording, etc. I didn't start doing that until probably, I'd say, at least singing every day, like probably a couple years ago. Yeah. But I'd say I didn't start probably like properly training my voice and warming it up and all this and until probably just a few months ago, right before I started doing YouTube. Yeah. So... <clears throat> About that one when it comes to musical instruments the biggest thing that helps me um is play with confidence even if you're wrong because <laughs> I'm, even if you're wrong you might discover a chord that's wrong like not what you were intentionally playing but you really like that chord i have come up with so many like transitional chords and little licks because i played the wrong thing but i was playing it confidently especially on piano <laughs> so you can just like play the wrong thing and it's like, oh, well, that's jazz. <laughs> yeah, it's Let me tell you the reason why I laughed so hard when you said play it wrong and play it confidently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try to make this a long story short. But back when I was in band in freshman year, yeah. my um, <laughs> so my my band director. I had just started. We had just started in marching band. This is just prior to the school year starting. We're doing our, we're doing our practices and such indoors. We get ready to do the outside portions as we're learning our music. This is like probably day one or day two of of marching band. 
yeah. practice right before school. And I'm, a, I'm an upcoming freshman, so I'm a newbie. I, I'm, I'm so green. I'm greener than the trees outside. I mean, <laughs> I've, I didn't fully know what I was doing, but I just played, play confidently, loudly, and all that. That's because that's yeah. pretty much what marching band is. Yeah. And then we're in the middle of playing this really intense piece, and then he cuts us off. And then he he looks directly at me, calls me by name, points at me with my trombone in hand, and he goes, "Did y'all hear that? This boy's this boy's a freshman." Point, and he points at me. He says, "Play that part you just played." And I I was like, "Way to put me on the spot, brother." But I played it. I played it loudly, and I played it confidently. And then after that, I stopped, and he said. That is the most confident freshman I have ever seen. <laughs> and that afterwards, the day after, this is day two, my, I, my parents picked me up because I'm not quite old enough to drive at this point. Yeah. My parents picked me up and he and he's just happens to be walking by the car as I'm getting in. He looks, he the windows roll down. He looks at me, then he looks at my mom and he goes, you know, your son is a genius. He can He can play so confidently and be and still be wrong but he said but he can he can play it with such confidence it's the funniest thing ever he can be so confident in something but yet he can still be wrong and i was just like i I just thought like that was so comical the way the fact that you pulled that pulled that up when you were talking about it and i was just like i have to tell him this story yeah like confidence is everything and i'm i'm not a great performer right now but i've been getting more experience and the one thing that everyone tells me is if you're performing live, be confident no matter how bad you think you sound and do more with your body and your expressions than you think you need to do because physical appearance and confidence in what you're doing, like if the audience sees that you have that, they'll forgive you for pretty much anything, like being so serious. Um, confidence is everything when it comes to music Seriously. coming from a man that literally was on american idol okay that's super i don't want to hear it. <laughs> that performance at all i really don't and it was far from my best performance uh but i seriously don't remember anything from that room really yeah i completely blacked out of fear so i mean you're sitting you mean you're standing in front of luke bryan Katy perry and who else lionel richie Li- yeah lionel richie yeah some of the all-time greatest singers. Yeah. yeah, and also there's like 20 cameramen and sound crew in the room as well that you don't see. Yeah. You know, there's 25 people in the room, and you're singing for a bunch of strangers, three of which happen to be some of the best musicians in the world. And so I don't remember any of them. It, just, it, was, that, it was that intense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is just, that's crazy. Yeah. For sure, man. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. And anything else coming to mind that you want to ask about? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> this is my go-to question. All right? Feel free to take this if you want to. If you were the president of the United States and you could banish any vegetable from the White House, what vegetable would it be and why? <laughs> Any vegetable from the White House and why? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I'm going to have to go with broccoli. Really? I honestly think I'd go with broccoli. I love broccoli. I always cauliflower, though, or beet. Like, that, okay, maybe I might I might have to pull my vote on broccoli, and I might have to go with, like, like beets or cauliflower because I hate both of those. I know. They're horrible. They are absolutely terrible. <laughs> Sorry if there are any beet or cauliflower farmers that are watching this. You're like, very and you are essential to the success of the United States. Yes, indeed. But just keep in mind, there are more people than just us that will eat your food. Yes, very true. So no, don't take it personally. We no. <laughs> do not take it personally ever. Yeah. <laughs> I hate. I mean, I'll eat a good amount of veggies now. I didn't used to when growing up. I know I hated broccoli. My mom, every time she would make it, broccoli, nope. Do not yep. put it on my plate. Yeah. I can't have potatoes, which is like the biggest shock for everyone. You cannot eat potatoes? No. And and you cannot eat because... It just make me feel sick to my stomach. That's how I found out that potatoes. 
Wow. And a bunch of pierogies, and I was like, yo, these taste really good. And then, like, tomorrow <laughs> here, I was like, ah, <laughs> huge, huge mistake. Well, now, I'll tell you, pier- pierogies have always made me sick. Now, I can yeah. eat potatoes, but pierogies have always made me sick. Yeah. I don't know what it is, man. But yeah. it, it's just every, all the potatoes? Um, I can have stuff that's, like, like, really processed. I don't know if it's, like, the actual taste of potatoes, because I don't mind the taste. But... I don't know. Like, I like Pringles, but they're barely potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, potato soup? <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not for me either. I love you, Mom, but I... I, <laughs> I love you, Mom. I really do. Like, yeah. I, she was the first experience I had with potato soup, and I hated it to the point... I hate it, or not only did I hate it, it made me sick to my stomach. Yeah. And it, it, it's it, it's nothing personal to her because I hate all potato soup. Yeah. Every potato soup that I've ever had has always been terrible and has always made me sick. Yeah. So, like I said, I love you, mom. If you're watching this, this is not this is not an attack on you. I promise. <laughs> um, she watches my videos sometimes. That's sweet. Yeah, my mom <laughs> keep up with my stuff. So it's a pretty awesome feeling too when you when you know your family's behind you as well. <laughs> Yeah. So if you're watching this, mom, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> love you, mom. <laughs> yeah. Like so. Anything else come to mind that you uh, want to ask before we move on? Not that I can think of, man. All right, sweet. In that case, we will move on to the. Oh wait, no, we have some more. We have a couple more. I keep forgetting these every single time. So we're <laughs> gonna do a few more. Um, just a small few. Uh, traditional questions and then we'll move into some community questions all right um so what is what are some of the funniest memories you have from working with any groups that you've been associated with so i guess in your case this, this would be the wellerman yeah <clears throat> funny i mean that's that's tough because we're virtual so yeah. i've i've never met bobby i've never met johnny stewart i've never met sam pope i've never met any of them yeah but Good laughs in our meetings. There was a, there was one time, I think it was probably March or April of 2021. We used to do like Wellerman group meetings, mm-hmm. and time that we had a meeting where everyone was just <laughs> doing stuff. Like I was doing work, and I'm pretty sure Sam was at like a pub or something, <laughs> and playing with his cat. I don't even think I think Bobby was on vacation. That's what it was. And so that was just a funny meeting of just trying to hold all of us together and talk about like what we should do. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool though, man. I mean, all being all virtual, like the base gang, it's pretty cool. So we're, we're trying to, hopefully our next step is we want to release another album soon, but it's tough because we all have jobs and we're all virtual and in different time zones. Yeah. So what we're going to do is hopefully Lord willing this summer, um, we all get together and spend two weeks just recording video and audio and stuff like that. And maybe we'll go on tour or something like that if we go to Europe. Um, but no promises yet. It's just in the works. But uh, Definitely I, in the cards. Yeah, that would be really fun. Definitely, man. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to ask this one earlier. Um, what are your thoughts on extend, extended techniques? So subharmonics, inhale, uh, chest fry, stuff like that. Yeah. Inhale is a no for me. (laughs) Just because, I mean, I am being classically trained. That's just not something that you want to do with your vocal folds. Subs are very, very useful. I'm trying to learn subs. I just can't figure them out. I really. I I sometimes got them. Yeah. Like, like Bobby and, um, David Del Monte, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, um, who are like people that I've recorded with. Their subharmonics are unbelievable. And like, just, I can't get them. And I want to do them really bad. Um, and just from there are a lot of people that I'm friends with on social media um, who just have such powerful fry. And like, honestly, <clears throat> Peter. I, have, I have a C and a B and a B flat. And so those are like common notes in russian pieces but i can't project over a choir so i wish that i could do like chest fry and just be a foghorn 
I mean, I mean, like then you you have normal chest fry, and then you have Peter Barber's chest fry. Which, oh my gosh! <laughs> I mean, you literally he'll destroy the microphone with it. Yeah, he will. It's kind of funny. Yeah. <clears throat> any other sub or any other sub any other extended techniques? I mean, whistle tones not very predominant in bass singers. No. But- <laughs> There's just so many things that you can do with your voice that nobody knows about. And I mean, I love all of them. So. What are your thoughts on um, inhale? I know you mentioned that it doesn't seem to be something that's conducive for someone that's classically trained. but Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you're singing for fun, inhale is whatever. <laughs> um, but, I mean, obviously with opera, there's a lot more vibrato and you're a lot more loose in what you sing. And oh, so- yeah inhale bass you actually damage um i think it's your vocal folds um which um will make your voice a little bit more wobbly and your vibrato a little bit more loose uh, metal voice especially basses and baritones doesn't really mature until like it's full state until probably 40 or 45 somewhere around there is mm-hmm. when you get the sound um and so if you're doing inhale bass you can really ruin that prime that you'll get as an opera singer. Yeah. It's just, it's not for me. I'm not going to hate on anyone who does lose your voice, but yeah. It's just, it works so well, I guess if it's well controlled Yeah. in my, in my research, <clears throat> yeah. I'm still learning it. That's my preferred extended technique, seeing how I can just slam a low note with that and have no problem. Yeah. But I'm still trying to like verify that it doesn't like cause any permanent damage before yeah. I, I do it every single day, all the day, you know, but yep. <clears throat> so you, if, so, I mean, you don't really use any extended techniques and extended techniques much, but yeah. you're trying to get a hold of subharmonics. Yeah. Subharmonics are just about the safest. <clears throat> That's yeah. about the only one I can do right now. I, I can't get anything unless I'm like very, very well warmed up. Do you know how hard it was for me to be able to just do the B flat one? Yeah, dude. I remember my first, <laughs> time, I think I did it on accident. So it was when I was um, in my hotel room for a different TV show. I don't know if you've seen it. I was on a show called I Can See Your Voice. Not yet. <clears throat> was great on that show. The cast, the crew, the judges phenomenal um, process overall but i remember i was so tired because i was on set for 10 hours Whew. back and i ordered i like whataburger or jack in the box or something like that yeah. and i back in my chair and i just went uh, uh like <laughs> died and it was just this super full like g just ridiculously full and i was like oh how did i do that <laughs> and but Dude. I think <laughs> when I when I hit my first when I hit my lowest sub, yeah. technic I was reaching for a B flat one in chest one morning yeah. and I pretty much had it like I was it was a really sharp B flat one yeah and I ended up slipping into a B flat z- really sharp B flat zero sub for like a split second absolute yeah. split second and I it was terrible quality and I I can't do it again but yeah. <clears throat> I thought that was cool. Um, my best subharmonic was a C sharp D flat one, and I sustained that for ten seconds. Yeah. And I about paid myself when I recognized what note I was singing afterwards. I was like, and I got that on recording too. That was the coolest thing. <clears throat> but subharmonics to me is just like when I can produce a subharmonic, that's crazy because it took me such a long time to learn how to do it. I've been trying for like two years. So. Yeah, I can only do high ones right now, but subs are cool. Yeah. Um. So this question isn't immediately obvious to me, and I ask it on almost every podcast. Um, do you have perfect pitch? I do not. I have very good relative pitch, though. That seems to be like the same response that I've been getting from a lot of people on here. Yeah. So mm-hmm. pretty much everyone has relative pitch. Uh, <clears throat> Because that's telling like which note is higher and which note is lower. Right. And stuff like that. But um, with I've trained my relative pitch, 
So I can usually figure out what a note is within a step, like a whole step. Yeah. So, I mean, it's taken a long time. There are a lot of apps that have helped me with that. Also, just um, my first like high level choir was my chamber choir in college, which I'm still a part of. Yeah. Um, and I remember the first piece that we ever sang was in nine eight. Like the first piece of music that we got was in nine eight. Yeah. I I had no musical experience. I was just like singing for fun. I didn't know how to read music. Yeah. And so I think being forced into that environment helped me to like feel out like how certain notes felt and to be able to, like be able to identify them by how they feel. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> I. I, you ever have one of those moments where you go to say something and then your brain just flops and just, yeah. that's exact. That's what just happened to me right now. I was going to say something and then just <laughs> like sometimes words will come out of my mouth whenever I'm saying them. But like when I go to say something I want to, it's just like it, it just yeah. falls right out. Um, what is one of your favorite things about being a singer? <clears throat> I can do it anywhere. Anywhere, anytime, pretty much. I don't have to worry about carrying on a case. Um, I mean, all I got to do is just take care of it. And um, I'm the chef Gusto of singing. I like to say, if you've seen Ratatouille, the big yes. chef, getting that chef Gusto. He says everyone can cook. I can say everyone can sing. No matter how good you are, no matter how bad you are, you can sing. Everyone can do it. And that's the magic of it. I mean, you can tell beautiful stories with it. And some people just have phenomenal gifts and just such a wonderful ability to be able to share those stories with people. And I think that's so powerful. It really is. And the, and the cool thing is too, is some people don't realize how truly powerful the human voice like yeah. actually is. Yeah. It's crazy. Seriously. <sighs> so that is the end of the traditional questions. Now we're going to be moving on to the, some of the community submitted questions. Um, so some of these questions starting off are going to be from the guy that actually hooked us up. Okay. Um, so it's going to be from Jordan. So um, we've already asked that question. So your full vocal range, we also covered that. So your B1, so right around C4. Yeah. Um, do you know extended techniques? Copied that. Uh, when did your voice drop? It was 17. Just about there. Um, this one is, um, who were some underrated bass singers that you know of? That's a really good question. That's a really good question. Um, man, I'm so bad at names. It's so unfortunate. <laughs> follow like so many great musicians, but I have like such a bad memory for names. Um, if you go on my TikTok, you can see all the people that I follow, and pretty much anyone that has bass in their tag is ridiculous. Like so good. Um, and, um, <clears throat> yeah, man, I think the biggest, like, bass that I've seen coming up that I admire a lot, that is very, very talented is probably, uh, David Del Monte, who's like 17, yeah. Italy. he is ridiculous. I've gotten to sing with him on, I think only one thing, but I think we're planning on doing something else. That's cool. I'm about at 500,000 followers now on TikTok. He's coming up, man. Yeah, he really is. He really is. So. Yeah, David De Monte. I'll have to see if I can't get him on at some point. Yeah. Um. So, how long you've been you doing music has been answered. Uh, what made you blow up has been answered. What is your biggest musical achievement? Shoot. That's a good question. Would American Idol be on up there? Yeah, pro probably up there. Um, I mean, I've gotten to go on tour, which is crazy. I mean, not solo, but I'm hoping to go on tour. Um, also, just it blows my mind every day that I can make a living off of music. Like, that was a dream of mine, but I never thought that I could do it. Yeah. And just stuck with it, and here I am. And that just blows my mind. Like, it's crazy. I've been on TV. I've been on the news. I've been asked to voice for movies and I've done radio commercials and stuff like that. And it's just wild. 
that I have been blessed with so many amazing. Movies. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So Seriously. crazy, man. Yeah. Um, so this one is, um, I feel like you've uh, indirectly answered this one, but this is from him as well. Uh, singing something you plan on doing for life. So, yeah. 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 Whether you do it professionally or not, whether I switch more to voice acting or not, um, I'll always, I'll always be a musician. So <clears throat> definitely, yeah. definitely not. It's, uh, pull a home free. It's in the blood. Oh yeah. Amen. Um, biggest well that that's was just asked um so what is your uh current day-to-day job if you have one i don't have one do not have one no so i um let's see my first job was at a burger joint called freddy's um and i cooked burgers and i made ice cream and took orders and stuff like that and then i went to home depot and i was a forklift operator forklift certified hey there you go please i can't take it weird um, flex but okay yeah. Whatever. Um, and then I cooked for a while. Um, I love to cook. It's one of my favorite things because yeah. I, them and then you eat it. Like I made that, and so I got to cook for uh, for a restaurant for a while. Um, and I'm good friends with the owner. It's called Beer Hall. If you live uh, near like southeastern Pennsylvania, um, and then uh, I mean I work construction. Um, I do that like sometimes because one of my friends here, I live in Lynchburg, Virginia now. Yeah. Uh, and so one of my friends owns a construction company. And so if he needs a hand, I'll help him with that. But I mean, for now, I don't really need, um, I can get by to stuff for this. So it's pretty awesome, man. Yeah. Um, so. how many times, uh, you sort of answered this. Um, how many times do people recognize you in public? Oh, at, like at least once a day. At least once a day. Yeah. Especially like, like I stopped at a bus stop in Georgia. Like in Georgia. It was my first time ever being in Georgia. <laughs> like you're Luke Taylor. And I was like, yeah. 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 <laughs> I get a picture. Like, yeah, sure. And I like, you would be surprised how often that happens. And it's just crazy to me because I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not people for crazy to know that there are so many people that have my back. You 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 weren't totally prepared for that, were you? No, not at all. I did not. <laughs> but it just happened. So. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, the this question comes from a guy that is, or his screen name is Element. Um, it, what is one of your most unique reactions to your voice? <clears throat> That's tough. Most of the time, because I look really young, I look probably. 18, but I'm 21. Um, so nobody ever expects me to sound the way I do. Mm-hmm. And pretty much the first time that I meet someone, there was like, oh my gosh. And it's like, yeah, I know, I know. Um, but um, there was one person, I can't remember her name, but we, I, I met her in a Walmart of all places. <laughs> and she was walking in just like over car when she heard me talking. Like, I wasn't even talking to her, but I remember seeing her, like, over a car, and she, <laughs> me, and she just wanted to talk to me, and I was like, what's going on right now? <laughs> yeah. That is funny, man. That is uh, so funny. My voice definitely gets, gets stares. So. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, This one comes from Bass Krispies. Um, it's a heck of a name, man. He asks yeah. a lot of questions in the community, and I, I love it. Um, he's, this one says you've made several jokes about having a baby face and a remarkably deep voice. Have people given you nicknames based on this? Baby face, face. <laughs> uh, um, a lot of people also like to call me redneck Gibby. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorites. Um, oh, and a lot of people on um, like in my comments like to comment Mikey from the Recess, which is like an old show. Um, I haven't watched it, but I YouTubed Mikey from the recess and it's just this fourth grader who has this beautiful baritone voice, but his speaking voice is really high and squeaky. <laughs> A lot of people call me Mikey from the recess, Red Man Gibby, um, man, Kratos. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. 
uh, I think people need to get a little bit more creative now. I mean, it's already all been said. So uh, I mean, babyface bass is pretty solid. You can't call me something that I haven't already called myself six inches from the mirror. So, <laughs> yeah. Honest, yeah. good stuff, man. Um, so let's see. Um, I've got one by the name of Dunk. Um, what are some of your favorite artists and singers, like as a whole? Let's see. Favorite to listen to is definitely like um, Coulter Wall, Tyler Childers, Zach Bryan, um, Cody Johnson. I'm actually going to see Cody Johnson in concert on the 28th. So if you're there, say hi to me if you see me. Yeah. Uh, most talented, probably vocally, Austin Brown is well up there. He's just ridiculous. Um, Lauren Paley is also phenomenal. Um, I mean, there are just so many upcoming musicians that I love because I also, hot take, I think that a lot of musicians, once they make it in the music industry, lose their musicianship. Ooh, but, but yeah. Big musicians used to be great, and then they got too cocky and then they lost it. So there are people that I think were amazing who have lost it now. Um, but I mean, there's just so many people out there, but I love country. So. Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, let's see. Here's another one. Um, what are some of your interests outside of singing? Or, I mean, you, you kind of already touched on that. Yeah. Um, did, did you think you had a unique voice before you blew up on social media and et cetera in the internet? Um, yeah, I, I knew that I had a unique voice. <clears throat> I didn't think that I could do anything with it. So my original media, I'm uh, sorry, my original, my original, um, my original degree. So I didn't get TikTok until my freshman year of college. I'm a junior now. Yeah. Uh, but my original gr degree was the law aspects of like the media. So like news and stuff like that. Cause I wanted to be a news anchor. Mm -hmm. um, Cause everyone had always said like, once I was a senior in high school, Everyone was like, dude, you have to do something with your voice or else that's a word. Yeah. Uh, ever about music. And uh, I don't know. I just kind of put myself out there. Here we are. It be it benefited you, benef benefited you <laughs> greatly. Yeah, seriously. I, I have a tendency to speak faster than my brain can process what's saying. <laughs> what's saying? Lord have mercy. <laughs> Perfect example. <laughs> uh, so that's enough or that's all those from that one. I've also got another list here. Where's it at? Give me a second. <clears throat> Let's see. So I think that just about brings us to the end of the community questions. Um, I think that's just about it for those. I just said that. What am I doing? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the end of all the questions that I have for you at this point in time. So is there anything that uh, that you would like to say before we go ahead and call this one down the middle? Yeah, of course. Um, if you viewers uh, would like to know me on a little bit more of a personal level or have any questions about me, I said it earlier, but uh, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. My DMs are open on all of my social media. Um, feel free to give me a follow on any of those if you want to see me keep producing music and other content and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, Drew, for having me on here. It's been a blessing, and I've loved talking to you. Man, it's been a pleasure having you guys. This has been Drew on the Vocast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We learned a lot about Loop today. Hopefully, we'll be able to have you on again at some point for another Touch Base podcast at some point. Yes, sir. I'd love to. Definitely, man. So, again, guys, thanks for tuning in. I will link all of his information in the description. Make sure you give his music a listen. Listen to the Wellerman. They are super talented. Also, if you are interested in um, supporting him in any way, go over to his social medias, follow him, subscribe to his YouTube channel if you want to take that contribution to another step. Make sure you check out his Patreon. Also, if you're enjoying the content that you're getting on my channel as well, make sure you 
pay a visit to my social media, throw me a subscription, throw a like, even drop a comment, say whatever you want, as long as it's not toxic. <laughs> and then that'll help us with the algorithm. And if, if you're enjoying my content to the point to where you want to take your contribution to the channel to another level, I also have a Patreon and it will be linked in the description as well. You can support me as little as $3 a month if you so choose to be that generous. So with that said, we're wrapping up this podcast today. Like I said, Luke, it's been a pleasure having you. Definitely yep. come have you back on at some point in the future. Might even have to work on some music together at some point also. Perfect. All right, man. Y'all take care of yourselves. We love you. This has been Drew on the Vocast, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.